are 10 days away, ladies and gentlemen, from kickoff to college football season. The AP released its preseason poll on Monday with the Georgia Bulldogs, L claiming the top spot. How you feeling, girl? Receiving 46 of 62 first place votes. It's the third time Georgia has topped the charts entering a season in the second straight season. Okay, so I'm going to start with you, obviously, our fellow Georgia Bulldog. Who do you think is the biggest threat to Georgia winning the Natty? Well, I think there's a few things. First of all, I think history is the biggest threat, right? In the last decade, there's only been one team that started out the season, preseason number one, and ended the season number one. That was Alabama in 2017. We don't tend to see this happen. Certainly didn't see it happen for Georgia last year when they were ranked number one in the preseason and weren't able to even make it to the postseason. I think on the surface, and I hear a lot of people say that it's Texas, and I will say Texas when it comes to the national championship for this reason only. I am not not concerned with some of the losses that Texas has had. I certainly think they've got the consistency on their offense, but they did have some pieces that moved on in the draft, A.D. Mitchell, Xavier Worthy being them. But Georgia plays Texas in Austin on October 19th, and I expect that Georgia is going to win that game. But here's the thing. There's only been five times in the program's history that they've had to face a team twice in the same season, and there's only been one time that they were able to have a clean sweep of said team. That was back in 1942. My biggest concern is that Texas, they'll play them in October, and then they'll have to play them again in the postseason, and it is incredibly difficult to beat a team twice in the same season. That would be my biggest concern. It's just who they're playing in the regular season. Are you just trying to win him over? And she's, the she's succeeding. When she's you succeeding. said the 1940s, I mean, oh, his, I his eyes lit up. up. He literally he lit up. He was like, who is this woman? <laughs> <laughs> and where did she come from? Trying to speak Absolutely. your language. You want me to go next? Yeah, oh, I'd love you to go. Okay. I think it's the playoff system and the new format in college football that's the biggest danger for, for Georgia. You're going to have to probably play an extra game. The regular season is going to be a little different feel this year because if you lose a game or two, it's not the end of the world. The format is much different than it used to be. You got, I mean, Georgia's going to make the, the playoffs. We know that. There's 12 teams. If, in fact, they're five, they're going to have to play the extra game, and that's possible because they also play at Alabama. Let's yep. not forget that. So they play at Alabama, not Texas. But I think the, long, the longevity of the season, that conference is brutal. They're going to beat each other up for 12 games. They're still going to have an SEC championship game. Uh, you know, it, you, it's almost like an NFL regular season. you got to pace yourself a little differently. I think that could be the biggest detriment to a team like Georgia because they're going to be everybody's big game week after week after week. They open up with Clemson. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. going to be everybody's big game. And when you got to play that many games and you're everybody's big game on a schedule, yep. that might weigh out a little bit. And to Doggy's point, too, their four biggest games are all road games. Clemson's a neutral site, but Georgia does not play well at the Mercedes-Benz Dome. And then they've got to face Alabama on the road, Texas on the road, and they have to face Ole Miss on the road. Those are formidable, but I've got to say this really quickly just to throw a dark horse in there. We're talking about the biggest impediment to Georgia winning the Natty. How about just the SEC? You're probably going to eye-roll me here, but I'm going to throw them in there. What about Missouri? I mean, this is a team that largely is returning the exact same unit last year that pushed Georgia to within an 11 point. I see Stephen A. with an 11 point loss. They return the most, I think, electrifying college football player at this point in Luther Burden III, and they've got a cakewalk of a schedule. I think they are an 11 and 2 team, maybe even better than that in the SEC championship. If they can sort out some of the issues on defense, in particular their pass defense, I think Missouri can actually sneak up on some people more so than Ole Miss. She like is it's a, it's a little hot I'm take. Gonna, I'm going to leave 10, now. 16, You're our first, too good. Our first oh hot take. Oh, my goodness. Stephen A. Y'all are making me laugh. <laughs> Alabama. Oh, That's where we're going here. What y'all no, talking no about? Let about me tell y'all something right now. Let, 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 me, let me tell you something right now, okay? I know Nick Saban is going the greatest coach in the history of college football who's now going to be on college football game day for this network right here. Oh, yeah. The great Nick Saban is gone. But Kalen DeBoer is no scrub. Let's look at this record right here. Excuse me. We're talking about Kalen DeBoer here. 25-3 and three over the last two seasons. The man has won 90% of his games as a head coach. 100 and four and 12 and nine seasons at Washington, Fresno State, even the NAIA suit falls for crying out like three national titles was in a national championship game last year against Michigan, and he is succeeding the great Nick Saban. There's a standard at Alabama, and you know what you got to do. Now, Kirby Smart is that dude. The man is special. We understand. A two-time national champion came up short, didn't win, didn't have a three-peat. Why did they not have a three
repeat, Miss Bold, Mrs. Bulldog L. Duncan, because they <laughs> ran into Alabama. That's Nick Saban. Why they ran into that man. Now, the, excuse, excuse me. Here's the deal right here. Kirby Smart, since the start of the 2020 season, what is Georgia's record against Alabama? One and three, including two losses in the SEC title game. What is Kirby Smart record? Lifetime against Alabama. One and five, okay? Jalen Milroy, last time I checked, he's the quarterback for the Alabama Grimson side. I understand they got questions with the receiving core. I understand that they got questions in that regard. I'm not sniffing at that, along with the quarterback position. I get all of that. But guess what? They're talking that these brothers might have maybe the best offensive line in college football. You got hogs down there in Alabama. Hogs. Excuse me. I got a run. I got a quarterback that can run with the football. He can throw with the football. I got a transfer in Bernard that comes from Washington with me as the head coach, okay? And then I got some big boys, the meat and potato brothers. Brothers sitting up there eating big, big globs and globs of beef in the Definitely morning for breakfast. When all else fails, give them the ball. Wear you down. Chew out the clock. Beat you up, stomp on you, roll over you. That offensive line, hog country down in Tuscaloosa. We're talking about Alabama. And we're talking about a coach that is considered great, that is succeeding Nick Saban. There is a standard that comes with that job that has been established over the last 17 years by Nick Saban. Kalen DeBoer knows what time it is, and Kirby Smart knows it too. Alabama, that's the biggest thing that I, Georgia has to be worried about. I say, we don't know if that's a standard that Kalen DeBoer can actually live up to because you're throwing out all of his numbers and his win percentages, and you know what's in common with all of those well, wins? Not any, of them, not any of them came with him coaching in the SEC. And it's not just that he's in the SEC now and it's a totally different brand of football, a brand what? that you just illustrated. Smash mouth, do this, whatever. I get all that. The other issue is that Alabama did lose some pieces from the team that beat them last year. There is a mystique with Yeah, they did. There is a mystique with Nick Saban, yeah. just like there was a mystique with Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, and they are not there, and no one fears the Patriots anymore because of it. They are the ghosts oh my for Lord. Georgia. They are. A there is something stuff, psychological when it comes to Georgia and Alabama, and beating them in the national championship, we thought exercised some of those demons. We have yet to be able to beat them in the SEC championship in the Kirby Smart era, but I am still, for what it's worth, going with Georgia, who perennially puts out one of the best defenses in the country, with Kirby Smart, who is leading a team that is the closest thing that we've had to a dynasty since Alabama, oh, versus no, 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 Kalen no, no. DeBoer no. in his first year in Tuscaloosa to with a bunch of losses from last year. You need to stop it. Yeah, I, I can't believe you, Al Duncan. Listen, listen. On the Six Class Sports Center, I watched this wonderful, lovely, marvelous host <laughs> hosting this show, and one of the things she religiously brings up is resumes, credibility, Fair. track record. Mm -hmm. I gave you a record of one 104 and 12, and all you got for me is that it wasn't in the SEC? Well, there was a national championship game that took place months ago right over our airwaves on ESPN, and there wasn't no SEC team in there. Yeah. That was Michigan versus Washington, okay? Um, wait, wait a minute. And why was Michigan there? Because they beat an SEC team to get there in Alabama, okay? All I'm trying to say to you is that Kellen DeBoer, when you see what he brings to the table, I understand he has something to prove, but it ain't like he coached in the SEC before lost and he's coming back. This is his first go-round. All we got is his resume, and the resume is pretty damn impeccable. On his level, he got three national championships. On his level, he had a trip to the national championship game last year. And all you got for me is that, well, he didn't do it in the SEC? All right. Oh, Let's my goodness. Furthermore, 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 didn't, Furthermore, didn't, Furthermore, didn't do it against the Big Ten either. Didn't do it against the Big Ten either. Well, the one thing I will, that Ellie's wrong, who did he beat in the semifinals last year? He beat an SEC team. Okay. Texas. And he and they they were much better than Texas. Fair. This guy's a, this guy's a good coach. And so imagine when, coach. so imagine when every one of your opponents is a Texas because you're in the SEC. I asked Nick Saban what's the biggest issue that's going to face Kalen DeBoer, and he told me consistency in the SEC. In any other conference, you can you can you can beat anybody on any given Saturday or Thursday or Friday or whenever your game is in college football. But in the SEC, okay. it's the consistency. It's the idea that there is ten Texases. That there is. 
six or seven of the best teams oh, that you've Lord. ever seen yeah. existing oh, in the yeah. 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 that oh, even some of the worst SEC oh. teams that are still better that, than the worst Pac-12 teams. You, 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 this is a does Georgia that, Bulldog talk. Does that include Kentucky, Vanderbilt, and South Carolina? Of course it doesn't. Who can't get out of their own way? Of course it doesn't. But, certainly, but, certainly, but, certainly, but certainly it's better than, I don't know, some of the other opponents that they've had to face in the Pac-12 and like a USC who doesn't play any defense. Well, it's uh, going to be very different. When's the last time Mississippi won a big game against a halfway decent team? Never. They never beat a good team. And I would still put the six or seven best SEC teams up against the six or seven best yeah. Pac-12 teams when they still existed. And I'd still well, we agree yes. there. Mad Dog, real quick. We you don't think there. the SEC is the, uh, the leader no, of their conference better. Better. No, any longer? Put Texas, Oklahoma in there. They're gonna add, you're going to add quality to it. But the one thing about the SEC, again, I know they I have Alabama and LSU and they have, you know, Auburn stinks. Mississippi never wins. Okay. Mississippi State's not a big team. Kentucky's a basketball school. South Carolina's been through a million coaches. And Vanderbilt's an academic school. They all, right. all play, and Missouri, really? Yep. They all play football in the SEC. Stephen A., last word here. It's not the NFC. It's not the AFC North. All I'm going to say, all I'm going to say is this. You know, I mean, I don't want to, you know, like, you know, question, question the credibility of Miss L. Duncan. Oh, but gosh. I Here think if we were talking about somebody other than Georgia, I don't think we would have heard that soliloquy from her. I, I, I think it's a little bit of bias there right there. That's what I'm thinking. Ain't no way. James Dunn, our producer, because uh, all he does is bleed Georgia, okay? All oh, he, he does is bleed Georgia. Oh, he yeah. put her up He's to this. this. These Georgia, right these Georgia Bulldogs are just, I mean, they're, all of their takes are the same. you got to be kidding me. I mean, come on now. Listen, the man can coach. And guess all what? Right. Half his squad, if not more, are guys that were already in the SEC last year. Okay, this don't okay. apply. Okay, so let's ready. see if we can coach Alabama. them up. Alabama. All right, we'll Roll revisit this conversation. How much?